Hello and welcome to The Punch. I'm David Penberthy, and in a week dominated by the asylum seeker debate, we're joined in Canberra by leading conservative, the Shadow Minister for Families, Tony Abbott. And with me in the studio, as always, our panel, Punch Deputy Editor, Tory Maguire, and Punch columnist, Luke McElveen. Now, we're going to start with the asylum seeker debate, which has exploded this morning with fresh claims from Wilson Tucky that there may be terrorists on these boats. Prime Minister Kevin Rudd has just hit back. Let's hear what he had to say. Um, I think uh, these are deeply divisive, um, disgusting remarks, and they do not belong in any mainstream Australian political party. I think Mr Turnbull should show some leadership and withdraw his support uh, for Mr Tucky's pre-selection as a Liberal candidate for the next election. Well, we'll start with you in Canberra, if we can, uh, Tony Abbott. Um, you heard what Wilson Tucky said this morning, claiming that there could be terrorists on these boats. Do you support what um, Wilson had to say about this, or is it just another massive distraction and an embarrassment for your side of politics? Uh, David, look, I haven't heard what Wilson said. I'm only going on what you've broadcast a moment ago. Uh, a lot of very colourful things are said by MPs on both sides of Parliament. Uh, Julia Irwin, for instance, has said some very colourful things uh, about uh, Israel, for instance. Now, uh, I think that uh, running around calling for people's pre-selections to be withdrawn uh, is uh, drawing a pretty long bow. But surely, I mean, Wilson Tucky, I mean, it's not like he's the head of the AFP or anything. I mean, what possible evidence would he have to assert, and setting aside Julia Irwin's comments from years ago about Israel, Wilson Tucky, to say that this morning, um, isn't it just a, a, an inflammatory, divisive and potentially dangerous claim for him to have made? Well, I read Greg Sheridan's uh, excellent column in The Australian this morning, uh, and in that column, Greg pointed out uh, that there are people who have been involved with uh, some pretty rough organisations in Iraq uh, who now have permanent residency in Australia. Now, is uh, Kevin Rudd going to call for Greg Sheridan to be sacked from the Australian? Is he going to call for the Australian to be closed down, have its newspaper licence withdrawn? I know Kevin Rudd hates the Australian <laughs> and is constantly accusing it of being biased, but is that the kind of uh, hysteria uh, and hysterical overreaction uh, to things that we are now subject to in Kevin Rudd's Australia. So c can I just clarify then, you're pretty comfortable with what Wilson Tucky said and you would reject Kevin Rudd's call for him to be disendorsed? Well, well as I said, I didn't hear what Wilson Tucky said, uh, but a lot of colourful things are said by members of parliament. And if members of parliament are to be disendorsed every time they say a colourful thing or even go over the top, uh, if that's what Wilson has done, uh, I think we would soon have a pretty empty parliament. Yeah, well, it's certainly uh, added some, some new colour uh, to the debate. Look, more broadly uh, on the politics of the asylum seeker argument, which has dominated everything this week, can I just ask you, do you think Kevin Rudd is winning the political argument at the moment with his assertion that the government is tough but fair on these uh, arrivals? I think the idea that you can have a hard-line, humane policy is a contradiction in terms, and I think Kevin Rudd looks like appearing ridiculous. I think what Kevin Rudd is trying to do is to be all things to everyone, uh, and I don't think it's going to work for him. The bottom line is the Howard government found a problem and created a solution. The Rudd government found a solution and has now created a problem. And the reason why the Prime Minister is suddenly sounding a little bit shrill, even a little bit hysterical on this, is because he knows that he has a big problem and his government has caused it. I'm, I might get our panel involved now, uh, Tony, with a question from Luke McElveen about some different views within your own party about this issue. Tony, uh, Mike Baird wrote a fairly, um, uh, your New South Wales colleague wrote a fairly compassionate piece for, for The Punch today. 
um, in which he argued the sort of the humanitarian side of, um, of the asylum seeker debate. I just wonder, and, and it's no secret that he's a man of faith as you are, I just wonder how, do you struggle with this as a, as a fairly prominent Christian, um, the issue of asylum seekers? How do you reconcile that in your, in your own, your political and your personal faith? Well, Luke, look, I accept, uh, as Greg Sheridan did in his fine piece today, uh, that if I was sitting in a camp in Sri Lanka or uh, somewhere in Pakistan and it was possible to pay a people smuggler $15,000 uh, so that I could then have a good life in Australia, of course I would want to come. Of course I would be tempted to come. And that's why it's so important not to send the wrong signals uh, to people in difficult personal circumstances by suggesting that uh, if you can get here, you can stay here. And that's the problem that Kevin Rudd has created by widely uh, advertising, not just to inner city electorates in Sydney and Melbourne, uh, but to everyone who follows the news in Australia, that we now have a more humane, in inverted commas, policy. Well, it's not humane to tempt these people to take to the sea in open boats. And that is the unfortunate result of what the Prime Minister has done. Mr Abbott, what is the humane thing to do? It's a very difficult problem, uh, but we didn't have it uh, when John Howard was in power because John Howard uh, put a whole range of measures in place which effectively stopped the flow. Now, uh, not all of these measures were pretty. Uh, not all of these measures were things which high-minded people uh, could easily endorse. But nevertheless, they stopped the flow. And unfortunately, the Rudd government has unpicked all those measures. And not surprisingly, the flow has started again. Um, Mr Abbott, you probably would have seen uh, the Telegraph this morning with the story about the, um, the chap calling himself Sheikh Heron and his pretty sickening actions writing to mm. the families, especially the widows of um, some of our veterans um, who died in Afghanistan. Um, mm. And Kevin Rudd this morning has said that he would like to reflect on the citizenship laws. He hasn't really mm. said what that would mean. What's your view? Well, obviously it is disgusting and it shouldn't happen. Uh, but it's typical of the Prime Minister uh, that he tries to have it both ways. On the one hand, uh, saying that uh, he thinks it's appalling uh, and suggesting that the guy uh, might be thrown out but not actually take any strong action. So uh, this is a guy uh, who uh, walks both sides of the street or tries to walk both sides of the street uh, and sooner or later I think he's going to get found out. What do you think is supposed to be done, though, Mr Abbott? I mean, this, he's been charged, but he hasn't yet been convicted. Should he be thrown out before the charges are even heard? Well, well again, um, I, 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 I didn't raise this subject. Um, I didn't go out, go out there uh, and try to gain uh, popular kudos uh, by making uh, statements about what a monster this person is. Um, I don't know what his precise citizenship status is. Uh, but certainly, uh, if he is a citizen, uh, the various racial and uh, other vilification laws uh, you'd think could be deployed against him. Um, if he's not a citizen, well, sure. Uh, why is he here? Tony Abbott, I just want to return to a point that you made earlier about um, this sort of suggestion that, that Kevin Rudd has sent the, the green light to um, people to arrive illegally um, on our shores. Wouldn't you concede that um, certainly the figures that Julia Gillard used yesterday about the 85% um, increase in refugee numbers from Afghanistan, isn't some of this just the result of the current state of play in international politics? Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure about that because uh, uh, the opposition used figures in Parliament yesterday to suggest that the number of refugees around the world and the number of asylum seekers uh, around the world has actually decreased somewhat uh, in the last couple of years. So uh, I, I'm not sure that I would accept Julia Gillard's figures, but regardless of what might have happened to the so-called uh, push factors, uh, there's a much greater pull factor at work since the government announced last year uh, that it had dismantled what it called the inhumane policies of the Howard government. In terms of the, the push factors, though, when, when, you, when you talk about the push, isn't one of the biggest push factors of all the fact that we as a nation, and, and 
well, my, my personal support is right behind it, and, and certainly it's, it's, it's received bipartisan political support in Australia. But we are at war against the Taliban in Afghanistan, and many mm -hmm. of the people who are coming here are, are effectively on the run from the same mob who we are fighting against. And, and that's why it's important not to run away from that fight, uh, because if the Taliban uh, once more take over Afghanistan, uh, then we really could expect uh, a flood of desperate people moving into Pakistan at the very least. And what we had yesterday were suggestions from Mr Rudd's Defence Minister that we're looking for a quick exit. So is, is it right, Tony, to, using that is it right to turn them away? Um, I think you've got to look at each particular circumstance in the light of what is actually happening. But I don't think that you can rule out uh, the sorts of things which uh, Kevin Rudd himself supported before the election, namely, uh, in some circumstances, at least turning boats around. Tony, we're almost out of time for this first half of the program, but um, in criticising the apparent softness of the Rudd government's policies on border protection, are you arguing that we should return to the tougher regime of the past where people were detained longer? Is that now the position of the alternative government? Well, well, well I, I'm saying uh, two things. That if you want people to understand that you can't just come to Australia uh, and expect to stay, uh, you've got to have pretty tough policies policies that won't immediately find favour with everyone, uh, particularly uh, in inner city electorates uh, in Sydney and Melbourne. And the second point I'd make is that the policies of the Howard government worked. Uh, the boats were coming before those policies were put into place. Those policies were put into place. The boats stopped. John Howard uh, found a problem. He created a solution. Kevin Rudd found a solution and he's created a problem. Okay, we're out of time uh, for this first half of the show, but we'll be back with more after this break. We're watching every move our leaders make seven days a week. Sky News Agenda. Welcome back to The Punch. On the panel today, Tony Abbott, Tory Maguire and Luke McElveen. Um, Tony, the emissions trading scheme has dominated headlines this week and again your side of politics has been the story or arguably made itself the story. You wrote an interesting column some weeks ago in The Australian where you said that sometimes in politics, in opposition, it was better to agree to pass something even though you weren't 100% behind it, rather than getting bogged down in a political quagmire over it. Isn't that exactly what's happened to the opposition now and its handling of the ETS? Well, that's probably uh, a fair enough assessment of how things look uh, to you, David, but I think that things have changed a bit this week. Uh, we have put some constructive amendments to the government uh, and if the government expects to get our support, it's got to take these amendments extremely seriously. And what I think these amendments do is highlight the fact that the Rudd government's ETS uh, is, as it stands, a jobs-destroying nightmare. Now, uh, uh, we couldn't responsibly support uh, the legislation as it stands, and I think it's high time that the Rudd government and its ministers started fronting programs like this, not running away uh, from this uh, mess of an ETS, uh, to explain just how you can impose the kind of uh, increases in electricity prices, uh, burdens on the coal industry and the farm sector, uh, which are going to destroy dro jobs and damage industries. But in getting so caught up in the minutiae of the, the legislation, I mean, you're fighting Labor on, a, on what is really its home turf, an environmental issue um, for, for the large part. Shouldn't you guys just be going hell for leather on debt deficit economic management? Well, that's a fair point, but we are also 
uh, required to do our best uh, to try to improve bad legislation. Now, um, at the moment, we've put forward, uh, we've constructively engaged, we've put so forward some amendments uh, which are going to make this uh, bad ETS better. Uh, whether you can ever make it good uh, is a moot point. And as I said, David, why is Kevin Rudd not out there explaining exactly what the impact of his ETS is going to have on the coal industry? Why hasn't he released his modelling on what it will do to jobs in farming, jobs in mining and coal? Um, why isn't Penny, uh, Penny Wong out there explaining these things? And if I may say so, um, some of you guys uh, should be uh, directing some of these hard questions to the government. And if the government is playing hide and seek, you should go out and search for them. Sure, but isn't part of the problem, and you know, we talked about Wilson Tucky at the start, that you guys have kept making yourself the story by holding a press conference, someone's holding a press conference every, every day to question Malcolm Turnbull's judgment on this issue and, and more broadly I mean how much how much of Kevin Rudd's package can uh, Malcolm Turnbull agree to without effectively signing the death warrant on his own leadership of the Liberal Party well, well well David the thing is that as it stands this is a very bad bill uh, there is universal agreement uh, inside the coalition inside the Liberal Party that as it stands this is a very bad bill now, we are not going to opt out uh, of the uh, attempt uh, to try to do what we can to combat climate change, but we can't support a bad bill like this. That's why we've moved these constructive amendments. Um, Mr. saying that the polling at the moment has um, the coalition in a very bad position. And the other day, to try and get to the bottom of exactly why, we went out and asked as many people as we could find to stop and talk to us in the street what the problem was. And the overwhelming issue for them was um, a lack of cohesion in the coalition and the idea that every time they turned on the television there was Wilson Tucky, which has inevitably brought up leadership speculation over Malcolm Turnbull. And the only name that has been sort of seriously bandied about is um, Joe Hockey. I was wondering if you were, um, had any thoughts about if perhaps there was a leadership spill and Joe Hockey did run, whether or not you would be prepared to challenge him for the leadership? Well, well Tori, you're asking me uh, a series of hypothetical questions, <laughs> and I'm not going to get into that, as you can on, imagine. It's not hypothetical but, but, that but, you're in a but, world of pain in the polls. But, 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 but I, think, I think that what happened on Sunday uh, was that we all agreed uh, that we would put a series of constructive amendments to the government uh, it is the government's ETS after all, uh, the ETS which the government isn't prepared to go out and argue for and explain. Now uh, uh, the ball is in the government's court and the government ought to provide some answers. But whatever happened in the party room, and yes there was a consensus, it had, I mean it, it's still spilling over as an issue isn't it? I mean there are still people out there questioning Mr Turnbull's judgement and as long as that continues to happen, his um, popularity in the electorate will continue to fall. Well, I think there are lots of people out there questioning Mr Rudd's judgment. I mean, if you're a politician, your judgment is going to be questioned. And the higher up the greasy pole you are, <laughs> uh, the more people are going to question your judgment. Those uh, people so, aren't in the, in the ALP, though. Well, I'm not so sure about that. I think there are lots of people uh, on Mr Rudd's own front bench uh, who are far from convinced uh, that climate change uh, is the great moral issue of our time, as Kevin Rudd kept preaching to us uh, pre-election. So uh, look, it's, it's not surprising uh, to see the Prime Minister's judgment questioned. It's not surprising to see other senior politicians have their judgment questioned. Even my own judgment has sometimes <laughs> no, been questioned. Right. Surely not. <laughs> so, so you're saying uh, that you're not considering a tilt at the leadership, Mr Abbott? Well, what, 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 what I'm considering uh, and what I hope I'm doing uh, is holding the government to account because that's what opposition should do. Mr. Abbott, now to the single biggest political issue of the day. I don't know if you've caught up with the news, but Kevin Rudd has never heard of Jimi Hendrix. Tell me you have. <laughs> well, I've heard of him, but, uh, but he was never one of my favourite musos. I was more a Beach Boys person. I mean, <laughs> Jimi Hendrix, he, 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 he was the sex and drugs part of rock and roll, and <laughs> the Beach Boys had that cleaner, 
Uh, I don't know whether it was true or not, but it was they had that sort of clean cut image. <laughs> but, but Tony, Dave Pemberley again, just on the on the decision of uh, Kevin Rudd to sit down and do an interview with Rolling Stone magazine, which I hasten to add was a, 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 a mind-blowing world exclusive on the Punch Am website yesterday. Um, mm. Earlier this year, you wrote a piece on the Punch where you called Kevin Rudd a toxic bore. Yeah. Um, do you think his decision to try to yuck it up and get down with the kids by talking to Rolling Stone, I mean, does it look a little bit desperate, try hard to you? Well, I think it, it does. Uh, particularly if that's all he does. And the trouble with Kevin Rudd is that he runs away from tough media uh, and all the time does this fairy floss stuff, uh, uh, like when he went on Rove and tried to be uh, funnier than uh, uh, Bruno. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, the guy's supposed to be a prime minister, for God's sake. And, and that means fronting up on programs like this. It means fronting up on agenda on the 7.30 report. It means doing battle with Laurie Oaks on a Sunday morning. Um, but uh, I think if you do all that, then you've got uh, a license to appear on Rolling Stone. But uh, he's just doing the soft stuff, not doing the hard stuff. But, I mean, to, to criticise him for, for, for doing a bit of fun stuff, a bit of playful stuff, I mean, it's, it's, it is possible for people in public life to walk and chew gum at the same time, isn't it? Indeed, but uh, he, he's, he's chewing the gum, he's not walking the walk, that's his problem. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just on, on, on back to your side of politics, uh, and we're going to have to wrap up in a, in, a, in a minute anyway, but you don't think that we'll be seeing uh, Malcolm Turnbull uh, putting on the wayfarers and uh, trying to sort of yuck it up uh, to maybe crack the psychological, uh, you know, 30% approval barrier? Well, I, I don't think Malcolm will play silly games with the electorate. And uh, um, I think that uh, Malcolm will keep doing uh, what he's been trying to do, which is to hold the government to account, um, to keep the focus on uh, the incompetence, uh, the deceit uh, that we are getting from this government, the broken promises that we're getting from this government. Um, that's what he'll be doing, focusing on that. All right, Tony, look, thanks very much for joining us in camera today, mate. And also to our panel, Luke McElveen and Tori Maguire. This has been Punch TV and we'll be back again next week. Thanks for your time.